I'll put the book on the side and we will just have a brief warm up. <clears throat> Everything is loose, <clears throat> shoulders, arms, ankles. And then we will do this. I don't know how you call this in English. In German, it's Hampelmann. Star jump. Star jump. Star jump, okay. <laughs> the German's better. <laughs> Hampelmann. <clears throat> okay, then we will do a variation of this. Goes like this. <clears throat> and then from here, you circle your arms. One circles forward and one circles backward and keep going with your feet. Looks like this. And then change directions with the arms and with the feet. It's a bit of coordination. <clears throat> okay. And then come to a small hop. And then breathe in and breathe out. In, out. Out. Okay. And then loose arms <clears throat> and shoulders. Okay, then to the knees, up and down. <clears throat> and then the feet to the side, same up and down. <clears throat> And then we go down. You can use your forearms to spread your legs even wider. Feel the <clears throat> tension in the legs. Okay, and then go a little bit wider stance. And to the left and to the right, very slowly, gently. <clears throat> And then go to one side and go very deep. You can lift your toes if you want. <clears throat> Try not to lean too much on your hands. Try to stay in the center, your weight. And then change sides. <clears throat> And change again. And change again. <clears throat> okay, come to the center. Then lean on your uh, knees. And then turn to one side, look at this side also and then turn to the other side and 
Enjoy the spiral in your spine. Okay, and come to the middle. <clears throat> so now we loosen up our hips, stand on one leg, and then just keep your hips straight and just uh, <clears throat> swing your leg back in front. So hip keeps straight. And now with every swing, you open your hip as much as you can. Also good for your balance, as you can feel and see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then to the other side, other leg, straight hip. And then open your hip. Okay, <clears throat> then we circle our shoulders, very big circles. Use the whole body, so go down, go up. Go down, go up like this. <clears throat> and now we can incorporate something Andrea teach us the last time. So when you go Forward, you can uh, pull your back to the back. Then you go up, and when you go back with your shoulders, you can spread out your breast to this side, and then go down, go up. Maybe you remember the wave Andrea showed us, where you move your chest and the back side <clears throat> to the front and the back. So incorporate that and then change direction also. <clears throat> so we make the circles even bigger by extending to the front and the back. <coughs> and then with the whole arms <clears throat> And now also use the weight of your arms just to let them drop. Okay, now change direction back, open up, open up. <clears throat> Free your shoulders and your chest. Okay, now we use something with uh, what um, Johnny showed us last time in the seminar, the Jacobson method, where you, um, uh, where you tense your muscles and then release all of a sudden. So it goes like this. So you go up, you breathe in, then you, do, uh, you, uh, you pull your arms down and elbows uh, to the back. So the shoulder blades will move together. You tense up. Hold your breath and then ah, you really breathe in, tense up, release. Something like this, okay? Breathe in. And one last. 
last time. <sighs> okay, and then let your arms hang down, very relaxed. Shoulders are relaxed. <clears throat> Okay, so now we will stretch that side. So stay squared, open up and then move to the side. So you have a good stretch here. And release other side. And one more. <clears throat> now you stretch to the side. You can also lift your the leg of the side to get a better stretch. And relax. And relax. Okay, so. We go to the floor, some upimi. <clears throat> uh, if you have a yoga mat, that, that would be fine. If not, fine too. And then we will go to do some upimi on the ground. Massage your back. Also use your arms as a support. And then from here, coming up to the next level. So you come up, you stretch, and then go back. Come up, stretch, go back. So if this is hurting your knee because the floor is too hard, then just stay down. <clears throat> That's also fine. Now I've lost connection. No. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then we will come up completely to a full stand. And we go down. And try to use the impulse of your body to come up. So don't use too much muscles. Use the impulse of the swing to come up. <clears throat> Okay, so enough of this. I'll remove my mat. <clears throat> so we will start um, uh, the forms with uh, Irimi Tenkan. So have a look first. So we start in a very relaxed position uh, in the honey, <clears throat> and then we will just turn on the spot. Don't use your arms yet. We will use them later. Just let them hang. 
and try to <clears throat> start from a, uh, from complete stillness and try to end in complete stillness uh, without correcting, try to stop in the correct position. Okay, hi. Some Irimi Tinkan. Okay, so now we will um, include the arms and um, imagine you have a, a shovel or something, you know, shoveling the snow in Saragossa, yeah, or in uh, somewhere else. So the movement is like, like this. And what we now do is when you perform the Irimi Tenkan, you raise your arms and let them sink. So. It's not, uh, they, they don't raise like this. Yeah, so in this way, but in this way, here. Okay. So <clears throat> my teacher once said that, um, that you form a, a roof over your head with your arms. So when you move forward, it's like this. That's like, like a roof here and then down. Okay, so include the arms, so then she wants. Okay, so the question is, why do we, why do we make a roof to stay under? Um, I think it's very simple. The, the uh, front arm is to protect, for example, when somebody comes with a yokoman. Yeah? This, this hand is to protect from the yokoman. So you, you get the yokoman with this arm. And uh, the back arm is to, after you protect, you perform a yokoman. So 
This is for protection. You, you receive the yokoman of your uke, and the other one is to perform a yokoman to your uke. So receive, perform, receive, cut. Now I think this is a simple reason why, why to use both hands in this way. So up your head, receive and cut. So do a few more and now think about, you know, receiving and cutting. Receive. And try not to come up when you, when you are in the center of the movement. So don't come up here and go down. Try to stay low and try to stay under the cut. Okay, a few more. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> okay, great. So, and with this movement, grab a bokken. So, <clears throat> this is great for uh, Ikkyo Ura, this movement. So, grab a bokken, uh, stand in the right hanmi. The bokken is in your left. So you can, you can hold it like uh, the, the right one, or you can hold it the other side. It doesn't matter because we change uh, the whole side uh, the whole time. So <clears throat> hold it in your left hand. Your leg is in, uh, your right leg is in front, so right hand me. And now when you come forward with your left foot, you, you receive the yokoman, which is coming from this side. So. You stay like this, you receive the yokoman. Okay. Receive the yokoman and turn. And you are in Ikyo Ura. So receive. Turn. And you change. Receive. Turn. Okay. Ikyo Ura. Hi. Okay, let's, uh, let's make a stop at the center position. So <clears throat> have a look. 
when you start here, when you receive and you are in this position, this is the time when you break the balance of your uke. Yeah? So you receive, here is the balance breaking. It comes from, from this hip and it moves to that arm here. This is the, the hand of your, of your uke. So it goes from here to here. Here you break the balance and then you turn. So receive, break balance, make a stop here. Feel that, that your, uh, the energy comes from this side and moves to this side here. And then you turn. So <clears throat> of course this hand, which is grabbing the elbow of the uke is also doing something, but I think it's supporting the elbow of my uke and my left hand in combination, uh, my right hand in combination with my left leg. This is breaking the balance of my uke. And then I turn. So make a stop here and really feel ah, this and then go down. So don't be too, uh, too fast. Make a stop, ah, break the balance, and then turn. Okay, I ask you a few more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and this is good. Yeah, great. <clears throat> so what I do um, when, when I'm in the center position, uh, here, I don't grab immediately. So imagine uh, your uke is coming with showman, yeah? And you are here and you are grabbing the, the wrist I mean, then you are really fixed and concentrated on this part. So what I do, I, I grab at the last moment possible. So have your hand open and then grab here at the last moment. So when I do this here, breaking the balance and then grabbing, you see I'm grabbing at the very last moment. Uh, so here, turn, and then grab. So in this way, you can use <clears throat> this momentum. So I try to uh, receive the showman of my partner with this part of the, of the hand. So with the, um, yeah, this part here, here. And when you turn, you can use that, uh, that curl and that movement to break the balance of your partner. If you already grabbed the wrist, you have to pull or push. So here you can use this. Yeah. So try to use this curl and grab at the last moment. Here and then, okay. Try this, Onigashimasu.
Christian. Yeah, Carsten, that looks very good. Great. Yes, Adrian, that's it. Yeah, Hedda, very nice. Good. Good. <clears throat> so when you do this, you will, I think you will feel the shift of, um, of your weight when you perform the Ibimi Tenkan and you curl your hand and the shift takes place here when I when I almost touch the ground, when I curl, you see that my weight shifts to that foot. And in the same time, I extend to the other side here. I mean, we, we don't stop there really. I don't, I just do it for showing it to you. So here, and then the weight shifts to that foot and I extend to that side. This is a bit exaggerated, yeah, just for for the for the show here, and then shift and go. So, and with that feeling, now do it a little more fluid, Whoa. but still have the feeling of that curl, this curl, and this shift, yeah. Okay, on a few more. Very much. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. And with the same feeling, we go to Omotewaza Ikyo Omote. So you also start with a showman of your partner and go down. And here, use the same movement to cut down. So don't grab and press down, receive, cut down, and then go in and down. So things like this, raise up and cut down, grab, press and go down. Yeah, hey, and down. Side, ah. and down. Okay, thank you
Okay, one last thing for this one. Time's almost up. So <clears throat> when you receive here, don't cut in front of you, or at, let's say you cut in front of you, but not at this line. So imagine Uke comes with a straight cut with the Schumann. So you cannot really cut him down here. So what you do is you receive and then you change direction and cut down in an angle. So you see now I have a maybe 45 or 30 degree angle. So receive, change the angle and then you go back to that line. So cut with an angle and then go down here and cut, go down, yeah? And this is very straight and maybe it's possible if you are really, really good, I don't know, yeah? But I tend to cut with an angle and use the, your whole body, your hips, your chest, everything points in that direction, yeah? So cut here, wow! and then go back to the line. So you compress the shoulder and the elbow of the uke back to the line, and then you can go down. Okay? So cut with an angle. Onegashimasu. <clears throat> And if you have the possibility, go down really onto, onto your knees. We tend to, you know, we did that uh, a long time ago with a partner. So try to use the Bokken now as your partner and really go down. Until the end. Yes. Wow. Hey. Ah. Yeah, Keith, that's good. That looks good. Very good. Yes. <laughs> I 
It's funny, everybody disappears from time to time. So if you go down, <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> Yeah. So really use your hips when you turn. Yeah. So uh, let me uh, highlight. So don't turn only with your upper part of the body, but really use your hips to turn in that direction. So everything is uh, lined up to another direction. Mm. And now uh, the, the arm of your uke is in front of you. It's not here or here. Huh? So really turn your hips with that step. And then go down. Yeah. And compress. Okay. A few more. Schmas. Yeah, Stila, that's it. Yeah, Catherine, that's it. Great. Okay, yummy, time to hand over. Uh, we bow out after Michael's class, right? Okay, then Michael, oh. your turn. Oh. Okie dokie. One second, just highlight myself. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Okie dokie. Ba, da, ba, da, okay, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. So just take a tanto or whatever you've got, a knife, pencil, flip-flop, whatever you've got at hand. Has everyone got a knife, just in case? Let's see. Okay, so everyone's got a knife. Good. So, so, so. Okay, so we'll kind of continue some of the work Sasha has been doing. <clears throat> and, and for me, the, the knife work's very interesting because it's a kind of intermediary between the Bokken work and the hand work, the, the kind of empty hand work. So obviously, if, really obvious, but it's a shorter weapon. Bit kind of dumb to say, but sometimes we forget these simple things. So it's a much shorter weapon. And the key thing is it's a one-handed weapon. So Bokken's two-handed, long. Knife, one-handed, short. So really simple, but it, it basically gives, a, gives us a, keeps the blade, keeps the idea of a blade, kind of slicing object, but it allows us to kind of work much more with a kind of fluidity in the handwork. So we'll kind of explore the knife work a little bit, but we're just gonna follow on a little bit what Sasha was doing. So. We're just going to first kind of connect to the knife. So 
just forget it's a knife for now and just think of it as an object, kind of piece of wood or a kitchen knife, whatever it is. And I just want you to just go to the ground with it, place it down, stand away from it, and down. Uh, we're not really used to going to the ground so much anymore. So what I want you to do is just first place it in, kind of connect to it, need to pick it up out however you like, and just kind of pass it through the hand. So just play around with the knife a little bit, play with connecting <clears throat> and play with really dropping it into the ground, placing it in the ground, disconnecting, but keeping a kind of contact with it. And then just kind of keep the contact, keep it in the kind of, keep the knife in the kind of peripheral vision. So I don't want to kind of focus on the knife. The knife's not the thing. So just keep the vision wide, open, kind of check your environment and connect with the knife on a level which is not about kind of focusing on it with the eyes. Really about connection with the hand in the center. So just place it into the ground and just really experiment different ways of going to the ground. So, so. okay. Great. Okay. Now I want you to just do a little bit of an exercise. <clears throat> oh, this is so bad. So I don't want you to do this kind of thing. So what I want you to imagine is there's someone in the room with you. So they're kind of walking around and they're watching you. Now the mo just imagine the moment I lose contact with that person that they will slap me in the back of the head. So you, you, at the moment I separate the contact and I go to the knife, you will get gone. You will get kind of hit in the head or they will just kind of poke you. Or they'll shout to you, or they'll, they'll say something offensive to you. But just imagine what, it, however you need to, that where the moment I kind of lose focus and I go exclusively to the knife, boom, you're kind of dead in a Japanese martial sense. You're kind of gone. The attack will happen at that point. So if we're looking at attack, self-defense, pressure, all that kind of thing, attacks usually happen when someone asks us something obvious like, have you got the time? And that moment when I go, oh, that's when the attack happens. So that, that moment is when I need to be super hyper aware. So just be, just be a little bit aware and just imagine someone in your space. They're kind of probably behind you. Maybe they're at the side of you, somewhere in the peripheral. But just imagine now you're, you're I want the knife, but I don't want to compromise my, my kind of um, focus or my awareness, my zanshi. So just have the sense that someone's in the space around you. And then just keep a kind of connection with it. And it can be someone on Zoom on the screen. It can be me. It can be a chair in the room. It can be whatever. Or you can just imagine it. But just use this as an exercise. Just keep your awareness out. So when you place it down and when you pick it up, just do this. This will change the exercise, hopefully. So you're not, you're never just training form. You're never just training the kind of physical skill. You're always training the kind of energetic, psycho, psycho skill, the mental aspect. So try and keep all the time this kind of sense of the, in the training. And Aikido is great for a kind of open awareness. Really great for training that very much a kind of open, non-focused, because we don't compete with one one person. Much, many, much, a lot of the movements we do are actually designed for multiple engagement. So it's kind of battlefield, all battlefield technique. It's not about kind of octagon combat. Sometimes get confused. So that's it. And then just really play with it. Okay, and challenge yourself now with different positions going to the ground. So <clears throat> just play a little bit with, it's a kind of new chemi, but I just want you to feel that you're going to come, come down to the ground, do something a bit more complex. And then as you come up, take the knife. Now, really, really, it's a simple exercise, but it's much more complex now. So to keep that expansive open awareness and to keep your zanjin kind of switched on, this is now really much more challenging. So again, I can do this in a kind of physical way. The, the, the exercise is easy. I drop the knife to the ground, I roll, I pick the knife up. But I can do it in a way where I'm actually die, I'm actually dead multiple times. If I look at Zenshin, the Zenshin drops and I'm dead. Boom. That's when the attack's gonna happen. So again, imagine someone else in the space and really keep the, the kind of mental aspect very strong. So I don't want to compromise my kind of focus or my, my expansive awareness, if you want to look at it like that. So I really do slowly. And really challenge yourself now with a slightly more complex movement. And again, this is about lots of things, balance, awareness, and there's lots of technical aspects, but they're actually not so important. Much, much more important is the kind of how 
I know what I'm trading. And it might sound very, very obvious, again, very stupid to say, but keep breathing as you do this. What we tend to do is in stressful position, stressful situations, we tend to stop the breath. So really keep the breath flowing. Again, just imagine someone in the room and at any point they could kind of come and attack you. Now you should be in a position to be able to avoid that attack. So you should be kind of constantly free to move. There we go. And just make this as complex as you like. So if you find this quite easy, just make the rolls a bit more complex. Try and pick the knife up in a much more fluid way as you come up. Just kind of explore it. There we go. That's it. Yeah, 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 good. So, very nice. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Okay, nice. And if you've got a softish floor, you've got something like this, you can also go to this exercise now. So, kind of placing it down, finding the roll, and the ground. And just keep, again, the, 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 the knife, the tanto is in the kind of peripheral vision all the time. I'm kind of placing it down to the mat, and then just so you kind of move with it. And then you can also do the same down. So if you've got a softish floor, use this kind of exercise. Coming down, take the knife, roll, and again, always just keep the kind of balance, keep the awareness open. Okay, so just kind of play with this now, placing it down. And you can do this again in the kind of simple way, kind of coming down, rolling, you can go backwards, roll. And just notice those kind of points in the technique where I go, where the kind of consciousness switches off or the awareness switches off. They will happen probably halfway through the roll because we're so focused on what am I doing with the roll? Uh, what am I doing my own balance? Am I doing a good roll or not? That's when, the, that's when the kind of awareness hits, drops. So just kind of notice that and try and, try and fill the whole movement with your kind of awareness, with your feeling. <clears throat> This is why partners are great in the dojo because they provide feedback on this level. So in, in online training, we've got to do it ourselves. There we go. Right. Ah. <laughs> you've been rolling for ages. Say again, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. You've been rolling for ages. <laughs> I know the Steven. <laughs> And I'll show you one more level for this you can play with. If you've got a yoga mat or something, you can you can maybe do this. Oh, I'm just trying to find myself. There we go. Hopefully you can see. This kind of, if you've got like a yoga mat, something like this, you're gonna you're gonna kind of place the the I just gonna call it a book. You're gonna place the tanto into the middle of the mat. So you can kind of place it, roll, and then try and refine it with the next roll. And it doesn't matter how you do it. But just again, keep this kind of expansive awareness. So your space is probably quite small. I've got a quite tight space up. Try and keep the rolls quite tight. But now have the feeling you're going to roll down, place the place the tanto, and then find another roll back up and, and pick it up again. So again, just making it a bit more complex. So now that the the, the 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 awareness has to be full because all the time it's going to kind of switch on and off. So again, I'm going to go. Where's the knife? And then at that point, that, that that's when the awareness breaks. So just keep again this sense of the awareness being full, 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 full. And it's easier just to think of someone in the room for me. Just the full, full, and it can be super slow. The slower, the better, actually. But just so you get to a point, and then I'm going to try and meet the, meet the canto again. And it can be very soft, very fluid. And again, it's not about what you're doing, it's about how you're doing it. So you can do any kind of roll or any kind of movement. There we go. And feel free to go kind of down the levels as well. So go back to a kind of simpler form. If you feel the kind of concentration is going or you're kind of breaking the, the connection, just go back down a little bit. So just feel free to kind of play. Yeah, and you can also do this just on the ground. So without the kind of standing up. So you can imagine just staying on the ground all the time. Just kind of moving. Actually, we'll go there now. So just to kind of give you a bit of something else to do. When you do these kind of animal, when, when I do these kind of animal locomotion movements, you're gonna do the same thing with the knife. Get, don't really think of it as a knife, just think of it as an object to play with. So you're just gonna kind of, you're always gonna be down in the ground now. So I want you to use the hands, use the feet, 
uh, use the hands, yeah, use the feet, use the hands, use the whole body. But we, a lot of the time in Japanese martial arts, we spend a lot of the, we spend a lot of time in these kind of positions. So we need the hands free to be able to do these kind of movements. So all the kind of swear as a technique really focus on the base so that the arms can be free. So it's clear that this is a weapons art. So what we're doing is a weapon weapon based art and, and taijutsu taijutsu uh, attached kind of attached to it. But the root of the taijutsu is in a weapons kind of way, a logic of weapons. So always, almost all the time, the hands are free. We're never in a position, if you think about it, where the hands are kind of in the ground, unless we're taking a game. So just kind of imagine now, just play around on the ground, but I want you to first play with the hands in the ground. So don't worry about Japanese martial arts for now, but just think about moving in the ground with the hands, the feet, but just keep it. And basically in this case, what you're doing, the center's always low. So the hips are always engaged down. You're always, almost always in a kind of squat position. So just play with it, play with the hands and the feet. And just move around, picking it up, placing it down. Picking it up, placing it down. Picking it up, placing it down. You can play a was it? You can play a kind of squatting, monkey movements, lizard movements. Just really explore with it. There we go. And just play with it. Don't necessarily think about moving with a, with a kind of bladed object. And you can pick your own animal. You can be like a cat, you can be like a gorilla. You can be, uh, uh, what else can you be? You can be whatever you like. Just play with it. And this you'll probably find quite difficult. If you do this for two minutes, three minutes, this is quite, quite hard to keep in movement. <clears throat> And just notice what's happened for, for most of you and for me too. Just notice this. <laughs> what, what's happened is this. <laughs> so you, it's a little bit like, you know, uh, 2001 the Space Odyssey, the monkeys in the beginning. The, the, they, they find the bone, they find the weapon, but they're all fighting over the bone. So that all the concentration is on the bone, the weapon. And they start fighting over the bone. But really trying to have a sense again of, 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 of the space around you. So now, Play with the hands where they're not going to touch the ground because it's a bit easier now to feel that you're kind of open and aware. So play with the hands in the ground if you like, but don't do this kind of thing. Have a sense of, if you come down with the hands, again, have a, the sense of the space around you, which you might find easier now because we're kind of used to it. Working with it a little bit like Sarai Waza. But keep it very light, no real pressure on the, on the knees. Very light movements. Use the hands as much as you need to. But again, play with placing the sort of placing the tempo down and picking it up. And again, really obvious, but keep breathing through it. Don't stop the breath. There we go. Nice. And I do this games with the kids sometimes in the classes and I get them, I tell them, touch my back, touch me on the spine. <clears throat> and I'm trying to not let them. So imagine someone's in the space trying to come behind you and touch you in the spine. And you want to basically, if, if you're looking at them, they can't touch you. So the, the idea of this is constantly kind of engage with the awareness. So it's not in a way, a kind of aggressive way, but it's just a kind of clock. If someone's in the space, I'm going to clock them. I'm going to clock the person there. So I'm going to watch them. I'm going to watch them. So just play a little bit with that. Just the last 30 seconds or so. There we go. Great. Stop. Okay, good. Just come up to, the, up to the legs. Just shake your legs off a little bit. Might be a bit sore. Okay. So the good thing about a gear is you've got lots of places where you can hide a knife in it. So you've got lots of places I can put the knife in the belt like this. I can kind of sink it behind my gear. I can do all this kind of thing. If you've got kind of, you've got all clothes on, you can put it in the pants as well. So you can do like this. But what I want you to do now is basically play with kind of concealing the weapon. So you're gonna place it in the, in the, in the clothes somehow. And again, what I want you to focus on now is a knife, is a bladed object. So really be aware now of what the knife is. You're gonna have it on the body and you're gonna draw it out. Now I don't want you to kind of stab or anything like this, but I just want you to play with it. So play with just placing it on the body. You can put it anywhere you like, inside the gear, inside the clothes. But just walk around it a little bit, very natural. And then just see if you can connect to it, take it out and just move with it a little bit. So just playing a little bit with kind of concealing, 
You place it in the back of the back of the pants. You've got a belt here to. And then just be as kind of subtle as possible. So the, the more kind of silent I am with these kind of movements, the, the, the more I'm going to conceal the attack. So you're playing a little bit like the attacking. Look at that, and then just make it as smooth as possible. So you're just going to play with kind of concealing it. It's like I want to hide the knife. So if you imagine a person in the room, again, keep that person in the room and imagine you're going to hide the knife from the person. So I don't want the person to be able to see the knife. And I don't want them to see me drawing it either. I just want to draw it and it's already out. So I just use that to kind of, to kind of guide again. That's it, nice. You want to be in a... All right. Nice, nice, nice. Don't press that button anymore. Okay. There we go, nice. Good. Yeah, and just make the kind of, just make the, the draw kind of really um, subtle, as subtle as possible. So make it, uh, the best word in English is like casual. It should be like casual. It shouldn't feel like, yeah, this kind of stuff. This is really like clear, this is really obvious. And also what I don't want to do, if it sits in a hard place, I don't want to be kind of struggling for it. <laughs> really get in a place where you can really feel that you can just kind of slip it out, all right? So it should be, it should be like, hmm, that. So just have the sense, the, the conceal also, it shouldn't be kind of, sad. it should be very kind of, uh, so just kind of play with it where it's very, very subtle. The quieter I am with this as a, as a kind of an attacker, the, the person will just not see it coming. So you want them to be totally unguarded by the time you make the attack. It's not something we usually do in the dojo, but good practice. All right. good. Good. Okay, I want you to keep the knife out now and just play with the grip. So obviously it's a knife. The 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 good thing with the knife is that you've got different kinds of grips with it. So the, th the, the, the three kind of main ones we use are the kind of downwards, the grip on top with the blade up. So this is different from the sword work where we've got the, the, this kind of grip. So that's a kind of basic one. Most, pe most people will take the knife like this if they attack. Most people will do this and they will grab and then they will stab like this. So that's, what, that's, the, that's the majority of the attacks you will get with the knife. The, this hand, the knife in the back, this hand in the front, a grab and a stab. And the stab will be like this kind of stab. So that's what we need to be aware of when we do kind of knife work, knife defenses. That's the most common attack you will find. If you watch all the videos on YouTube and of knife attacks, you will see that's the majority of the attacks. The other one is, is actually quite common is this one with the knife stabbing down like a kind of psycho. Because people watch psycho, they kind of get this as an idea. And this is a very effective way of, of, of using the knife because it's very difficult to kind of stop this kind of downwards arc. So, just play a little bit. Don't think about, again, don't think about striking. Just think about the, the, the knife basically flowing through the hand. So for us, for Aikido, how it's relevant for us, apart from self-defense and all this kind of stuff, is, is, is in a way it's the handwork. So it's the kind of shifts in the handwork. And this is really like kind of kokyu work, connection work. And it's much finer than the kind of Bokken work, the Joe work. It's got a much more fine quality. So just play with the handwork, just play with passing it. If you get kind of stuck for ideas, think about the movements we make with the Joe. So when we do these kind of Joe turning movements, just think about these. And just, you, you can kind of forget that it's a knife for, for a few times, just to kind of get a sense that you're gonna play with the knife. And just move it through, just move it. And just play with different kind of grips. And again, try and get this transition kind of seamless. So they're very smooth, smooth as possible. And you'll notice the hand needs to, the grip needs to be very, very light on the on the on the chainsaw. As soon as I grip it hard, these transitions are really not possible. So I need to have something very, very light. So it's a kind of palm contact most of the time, and the fingers are just kind of draped on, over the weapon. So it's got this kind of quality. It's much softer. And again, just move around the space, play with it, really explore. You can also play with kind of concealing it, putting it in the in the clothes, putting it in the pants, coming, bringing it back out, transitioning it. Play with it, play with passing it behind the back as well so that it's out of reach. Over the top of the head. Not movements you would probably make with the knife, but just play with it a little bit. 
can move the whole body, make it as complex as you like. There we go. Nice. And you probably got told as a kid, I did anyway, a lot of times, don't play with knives. Don't play with knives. And this is the worst advice you can give a kid because the best thing you can tell them is play with knives because they get used to very quickly. They're dangerous, they're sharp, and I need to be very careful with them. So the advice should be be careful with knives and play with them, but don't not play with knives. This is stupid advice. Only this is, this is really bad advice. So play with it, be careful with it. This is always the best advice. So do the same thing, but be, be kind of hyper aware now about the blade. So I want you to really think that it's now a sharp object. But it's, it's kind of representative of, but, and, and the tanto itself is very dangerous. So when we use them in the dojo, because they tend to have points as well, whereas the bokken doesn't, and the joe doesn't, the knife, the tanto itself is a dangerous weapon. So I've seen a few incidents in the dojo where they get into the hand. This is, the tanto, the tanto is very, very dangerous. So we need to be hyper aware when we use it, that it is a weapon in itself. But just for now, think about it as a bladed weapon. So just think about it kind of passing through. And think about how you're now using the arm to kind of manipulate the bladed part. And again, a bit obvious probably to say, but you've got two parts, two, two main parts of the blade. You've got the length with the blade and you've got the point for stabbing. So you've got this for slashing and you've got this for thrusting. So those are the kind of two main points. And you've got the back of the blade is a, is, is a kind of defense. <clears throat> just play with it. Again, just think about the kind of movements you would make with a knife thrusting movements, but just kind of fluidly go through them. So don't think about kind of striking or stabbing. Just think about moving and manipulating the blade through the space. And again, change the hands, play with concealing it and start to move the body a bit more now. So start to kind of move through the space. You'll find these movements like tank hand movements really fit in with knife look. Slicing movements, coming forward, uh, and just start to see if you can basically, you can do that. We can do knife work in a way which is very practical, practically minded. And I'm just going to focus on stabbing, thrusting, cutting, this kind of thing. But I can do it in a way where I practice the knife work to kind of how, how to better find my kind of Aikido kind of sense. So think about Kokyu work as you do this. So again, center to periphery is the big kind of principle we're working all the time. So think about center to periphery, the center leading the movement. Just think about the connection now between the blade, the tanto, and the hips. Just move through the space. And again, make the movements as complex as you like. I feel really quite connected to the blade. Just start to move with it. And again, don't think about the kind of impact stabbing. Just think about moving it through the space as if you're drawing with a paintbrush. So as if you've got paint on the end of the, on the tanto and you're kind of drawing, drawing a design in your space. And all the sword masters in, the, in ancient Japan were all the painters, so painting is a really good metaphor for the sword. How to handle the brush and how to handle, handle the blade. Very, very similar. Oh, Catherine, very good. You've got, a, you've got a brush. Great. Perfect. Even better. Use a brush. There we go. <laughs> you don't even need to imagine being a painter. Just do it. Great. <laughs> A paintbrush also has two ends, so you've got a stabbing end or a pop, 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 bump end, and you've got a stroking end. So you can you, a paintbrush also has two things like a like a blade. You've got a stroke and you've got a stab. It's the same. Painting and knife works really very similar. Tack the canvas. Correct. There we go. Nice. All righty. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Okay, so, so we'll look at a bit of kind of movement with it. So there's, there's kind of eight directions you can do with it. So we're just going to play with the first two. The, the most common in, in terms of movements like this is just slashing. So I just wanted to play with this kind of movement. And again, just focus on the first few, just focus on the, the feet being glued into the ground and just kind of, again, kind of slicing across. And just think about this, the, the blade is super sharp. Like Sasha was saying before, he sharpens the kitchen knives. If the knife's sharp, I don't need to push through it. So I don't need to, uh, yeah, this kind of stuff. It's just a kind of shoo. So imagine you're cutting paper, something in front of you, it's just shoo. It's just one con constant arc. 
true, 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 true. And as long as the center's behind that, that movement's going to be very powerful with a blade. But it doesn't need to be kind of aggressive. And actually, it's better if it's not. I want, I want the knife to do the work. There we go. And just play with both hands. Again, just playing with the center connecting, the hips connecting to the blade. Just drawing it one side, passing it the other. Just be aware of the shoulder, the elbow. Is it in structure? Is it heavy? Are the hips flexible? Am I locking my knees to do the movement? Am I breathing as I do it? All these kind of stuff. Yeah, let's play with it. Michael. Hello. Hello. Just one question. With the tanto, oh. what is it? What is the right grip? Because we, you know, with the bokken, we have to use these two fingers, and these should be relaxed. And with the jaw, it changes from time to time. Sometimes this, sometimes that. But with the with the tanto, what's the right grip? It's a bit. Does, it, does it change every time? It's going to change all. Now it, it's the content. It depends on what I'm going to do with the knife. Okay. So we'll go through it a little bit when we do this. But if I if I'm if I'm doing these kind of slashing motions, I want to use it a bit like a kind of sword. So I want I want the grip to kind of be behind it. So like this, mm -hmm. this, and that's basically the same way I would use a kind of slicing way, like a shomenuchi yokume. So that kind of grip is appropriate for this kind of slice. Okay. But obviously the knife is very versatile, so I can change the grip like this, and mm -hmm. I can do the same slices. Uh -huh. Like that. So it's like context dependent. It depends okay. what I'm going to do with it. Or intention dependent is probably a better way to say it. So depending okay. on what I'm going to do with it, there's a there's an appropriate grip and there's an inappropriate grip to do it. So okay. that's that's basically the and long answer. Do we like do we know naturally? You probably do, but do we naturally know what grip to make? depending on the content do you think if, we're doing, if you think about this kind of common attack like most people will what we don't usually think about in aikido is like a grab so we the knife work will always be the hand will also be free because it's a one-handed weapon the other hand's free and it's mm -hmm. free to grab. so that will be the most common attack is actually the grab i'm going to pin the person and then i'm going to stab them so mm -hmm. most people use a knife like this they'll take a grip like this and they will use a death grip so a lot of martial arts techniques that will try and get the knife out of the hand by hitting it from the yeah. side, this yeah. will not work because okay. most people, if they're attacking, will grip for death with the with yeah. the with the tap. And most people will grip like this, and they will grip in a way where you will never get the knife out. So, okay. and they will grab you, and they will do this kind of stuff. So, most people naturally will grip like this if they're attacking someone. Okay. And they they sometimes grip like that, okay. like that that kind of way, and step down with it. So, depending on how I grab it, that's how I'm going to use it in a way. So. Do we have defense for those grips, or do we just have to run away if we can? Or oh, for self-defense. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, like <laughs> when somebody really, really grabs the knife, and there is no way. <laughs> it's the situation in the first place, is the old all I can say. Try not to, try to avoid people with knives. You just run away, but let's say you couldn't. Is there any way to... <laughs> I would say uh, Cobra Kai rules apply. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Someone with a knife, okay. if you have to fight. If you have okay. to fight. That, that means that you're fighting for your, for your life. So that's when no rules, no advice will help you. If that helps. I've lost everyone. Everyone's gone. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, I lost you all for a little bit. I'm okay. We're back. We lost you too. <laughs> I'm unstable. Okay. I think it's the storm. Okay, so we'll, 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 we'll kind of move on a little bit. Just play now with this. I don't know if I'm spotlighted now. Oh, a little bit. There we go. Hopefully that didn't answer anything, but you, you basically need to play with it. And, and the best thing is get a kid to do it. So if you're in a dojo where you've got the kids' classes, get the kids to attack you with a knife because they will know instinctively how to use the knife and they will be the, the worst attackers in terms of being caught out. They will just catch you out all the time. I do it in the dojo with a foam knife, with a, with a kind of foam protection, so I get them to kind of attack me with the knife. You will get stabbed a lot. So the, 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 the advice Saito Sensei gave in a knife fight is in one of the books and he says, you will get cut. It's just a matter of how kind of deeply and well. So most of the knife work self-defense is on, is on protecting the internal organs. So it's on protecting the center line, the brain, the head, all the kind of, the kind of arteries, all this kind of stuff. So knowing what to protect and be willing to sacrifice something 
in a knife fight. That's basically what's going to happen. So, but I have zero experience with being attacked with a knife, so don't listen to me at all. And hopefully, I pray you will never go in that situation. So, okay, so just play again with this this move, and just play now with switching it. So you can use this way. So you've got this attack this way, and you're going to use it like a kind of this way. Turn the blade again, and then slice it across. So you've got this kind of motion, this kind of motion. And again, just play with a kind of, again, center out. It's a bit kind of tricky because the movement's not in a way kind of natural. It's like that, that, but it's a kind of extreme way. So just play with like this way, and you can play with just switch, switching, switching the knife. Yeah. But again, just get this idea that the center's behind everything. So the center, bah, bah, bah. We also want to be practicing kind of cocky work, even though when we're, whatever we're doing, we want to be practicing whole body kind of cocky work. That's it. Yeah, and most of you doing kind of naturally, just move around the space a little bit now. So play with the slice, and you will find now this movement opens out naturally into kind of rotation movements. So very much like swords kind of slicing work, and the movements we make in kind of ikkyo, uh, kaite nage, all this kind of work, just start to basically open the movement out a little bit now. But try and stick to a kind of horizontal slashing move. And play with which side the knife, or which which way the knife is, which way the blade is. And just kind of pass the knife through. Again, not really playing with a kind of percussive impact. <laughs> playing with a kind of slicing movement. So it's got much the knife, much more dangerous. The knife is the most dangerous weapon you can come across probably in close quarters, apart from a nuclear bomb. But this is different. <laughs> we'll just annihilate. You've got no chance. So maybe it's not the worst. On a, on a confrontation personal, then that's probably one of the worst weapons you can come up with. If you imagine someone coming at you with a katana, you've got a big, 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 obvious attack. So, but if you've got someone with a knife, you'll probably not see it coming, so. Again, just be aware of the person in the room now, or the other person in the room, your imaginary person. Imagine they're kind of coming towards the back, they're gonna kind of grab you, all these kind of things. So it's now got a much more kind of defensive quality. So I'm kind of using the knife in a way which is not, which is a kind of stop. So you're kind of taking a position now. And just kind of engage things in the room or an imaginary person coming to the back. And again, now play with the knife being in on the on the body, free from the hand. And just imagine kind of coming out with it, rolling through it, and then coming back to it. So you can place it in the pants, place it behind. Just use this kind of simple kind of attack. You can take the knife however you like. So you will find these reverse grips now really, really really help. So you've got reverse grips coming out, slashing out. Just play with it really. And again, be hyper aware of it as, as being a kind of bladed object. So treat it, treat it as if it's a real knife. It's the best way to kind of approach knife. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Nice. Good. And take it seriously, but play with it. That's the, that's the kind of best way to look at this kind of work. So it can be very kind of light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Very nice. Great. And you will probably find if you're right-handed, you will naturally go to the right hand almost all the time. It's kind of natural because the right hand will be the, the kind of stabbing thing and the, the, the other hand will probably want to grab and defend. <clears throat> so just play a little bit with both sides. If you're, if you're right-handed, go to the left. If you're left-handed, go to the right. Just see how difficult it makes it. Also play with putting the knife to the back of the body. So you make it a bit harder to kind of find out. The knife would usually be carried in the back of the, 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 with the samurai. They would usually carry the knife in the back or they would tuck it somewhere in the gi. Most of them would have multiple knives on the body. So the gi would kind of conceal multiple, multiple weapons. So just feel that it can come from anywhere at this point. Right. Okay, good. So we'll just add a kind of another attack, pretty basic, which is the ski. So it's the one we're kind of most used to with the, with the knife work. So this is a bit, it's a bit kind of interesting because if you look at a ski, if you look at a punch, most people when they punch, they won't kind of advance the leg. They will work with a kind of jab, unless they're kind of coming through with a hook, kind of punch like this. Most people will kind of stand away and punch from back like this. So when we do an Aikido, what you'll, what you'll see when we do the ski work and we kind of step through and do this kind of movement. 
this kind of really comes from knife work. So the idea with that is like a, it's an advanced movement. So the knife's at the back, and then I'm coming through with the stab like this. So this makes total sense now with the knife because I need to bring the whole body through the movement. If I can do like this, but it's, it's basically limited. Now, obviously, most most um, most stabbing work, if you think about stabbing work, is going to be like this. So this is the this is the natural way that you will the, the attack will come. But in this case, this is something a little bit different, which is like an advancing lunging attack. So this is like a killing strike that, that I want to kind of commit totally to something and bang, straight through. So it's got a very aggressive and it's like one, if you think about it, I've got one chance to do it. Now, you know, if I'm attacking on the street or those kind of things, you will probably get da, 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 this kind of stuff. This is natural, but if you imagine like a really, I want to commit totally to, to one thing, which is kind of what we do all the time with kind of suburi work. So just imagine the kind of knife concealed again, and then just, just naturally kind of step through and let the knife follow with it. And don't, again, don't worry about kind of an impact, a kind of stabbing movement like this, yeah? Just think about passing the knife through the space. So in this case, the grip is blade up. The hand's on top and the blade is facing up. And the reason for that is that this is not just a stabbing movement, this is a slicing movement. So I would thrust in and then I would pull the knife back out like this. So this is designed Japanese, although we call it knife work, it's actually dagger work. So it's, it's based on a slightly longer weapon than a, than a knife, which would be usually shorter. So it's much more used like a dagger, an old an old medieval dagger. It's basically the kind of way we use it. So it's got a slide this. There we go. Just play with it. And again, play with both sides. If you're right-handed, you'll find it natural to go to the right. But... Okay, good. Okay, and we, again, it's a kind of weapon work, common thing with it. It's, it's, it's the true with the bottom work. So we tend to be kind of external with the weapon so that the strike's happening now, da, 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 rather than the strike happening in the center of the body. So the feeling of what we, when we train like the first Saburi, with the strike, the impact actually happening, boom, center out, rather than kind of peripheral first. This happens all the time when we do kind of advancing work with the nine. Almost, it's almost totally inevitable that it's going to happen. We're going to go into this kind of work. So everything kind of uh, loses forward. Think about, in this case, what, what you would do with the attack like this is I'm going to close the distance first and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to press through. Yes. So that the attack will happen much closer. If you get attacked with a knife, hopefully never, but we can train in the dojo, is that in order to really make an impact through the person, I need to get close first and then thrust through. So that the attacker will be here before you see the knife. So that's why knives are so dangerous because they will, they, the person will already be here and then the knife's there. So it's not going to be a case where the knife's going to go, uh, I got loads of time to react. It's going to be uh, like this. So just imagine you've got something much, you're, you're much more dangerous with this. So think about the center work, the body work's going to bridge the gap and then the, the thrust's going to come through. So just think about it this way now. You play with both sides again. Also play with concealing the weapon, moving around the space. Just be kind of hyper aware of what you're doing. So you want to be in a really kind of engaged, space with the, with, the, with the kind of mental aspect. Yeah, and the other thing, which is a kind of not a technical thing, which is a, is a kind of mental or energetic thing, is really think that the movement itself, the ski, the ski work is done with the whole body. So I, it's again, I want the feeling, we're going like sword work. I want the feeling when I make the thrust that the whole body's going to enter into the ski. So again, it's not about the, the sword doing the ski, the weapon doing the ski. It's about internalizing the, that kind of motion. So I want the whole body to go. <laughs> so I want the whole body to make that movement. So even though it's very, very simple exercise, you can really kind of access this now. Really think that the whole body's gonna thrust in. So it's, a, it's again, it's body work. It's not, it's not really weapon work in, in a sense like this. Okay, just try that. <laughs> See you soon. Yes. <laughs> just play with it a little bit.
Just do one more minute. Good. Okay, we're going to do one more minute, and this is a, this is a really nice attack. So what Sasha did at the beginning was kind of coming up and then coming down with like a yokuman. You're going to do this, put the, put the blade in the side like this, and you're going to roll in, do the same movement, draw the knife out and slice it down this way. You can play with the knife however you want, but I want you to have this again. It's feeling like a kind of a really quite aggressive kind of thing. You're going through the space, it comes in and then boom, it comes out like this way. So just play with this now, which is it's, it's another kind of striking movement. And this is actually much more controlling. So this is a movement I would actually use to control. It's kind of coming in, pressing in, and the knife goes to the throat. And this is to control someone, to say stop. So this is not a killing movement. This is a controlling movement. It can be a killing movement, but yeah, you're gonna use this in a way. Feel that you're gonna come in, suppress, and then come through with it. So it's got a really like a holding quality. So it's not a block, it's not a killing strike. It's a, it's a neutralizing movement. So the whole body's going to do this neutralizing thing. And again, it might be obvious, but this is really like a cocky work. So it's got it's really a sense of cocky. And the hand is open to be able to use the grab or something like this. So just play with it for the last few minutes. You can do both sides as well, but the key thing is just to get the intention behind it. Someone's coming into the space, very aggressive, and I go, oh, no. So it's got to get a very subtle quality. There you go. That's it. So the big problem we've got with, always with weapons is like, how do we not kill people with it? Because if we're training like Aikido, it's just about neutralizing aggressive force, uh, coming to a kind of harmonious uh, ending. If I'm using a knife in a way which is RAM! Uh, there's not a lot of harmony in that because I just slashed the guy's throat. So where's the harmony in that? Now, if he's a really bad guy, maybe you can justify that, but really think in, in this case, you've got like a soft quality. So I think in, in, in terms of like a real Todoro, so Kokunaga, this kind, of, this kind of soft quality. So it's not got a kind of heaviness right, like this. It's got like a kind of softness. So it's got like a kind of uh, that. So there's a, there's a kind of soft intent with it, which is about, again, receiving, opening the body letting the person in and then neutralizing it, putting yourself in a position where you can control the person. So just look at that kind of intention. Just uh, 30 seconds or so, and we'll finish. Which is a kind of strange thing, she's got a really dangerous weapon and you've probably got a very aggressive person. And if you can meet that with a kind of softness, oh, this is incredible. There we go. Let's see. Just the last few. Nice. Okay, great. So we'll stop there. So obviously there's a lot of material with the knife work and we, we don't explore it enough. So there's lots of kind of solo work you can do with it. But the main thing again is like play with play with it and, and be careful with it. Play with a real knife a little bit in the house if you like, but be really careful. And uh, yeah, there's lots of drills we can do with partners as well. So it's a very interesting topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Domo. Arigato. Uh, Domo. Domo. Arigato. Good. Great. Good. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, I got you later. Great.